So it has the following instructions as usual must be used to these instructions. Yes, it has three sections as usual. And section A, which is always compulsory. Section B, which consists of uh, three questions and you're supposed to choose, always choose three questions. Section A is of, is of 30 marks and section B is a, of 80 marks. If it is 40, 40, that is uh, 110. Then plus section C, you are given three questions. You are supposed to then you are supposed to choose one question from section C and see this. So this goes up to your question paper of metric. That's how you're supposed to, to write it. As you can give, you are given here objective type of questions which are multiple choice or completing sentences or matching. They are supposed to give you 30 marks. You are supposed to finish them within 20 minutes. Then section B, there are three direct questions as you've already seen that, but you're supposed to choose two questions and each is of 40, 40 marks, you can see this. If you choose two of these ones, this is going to give us 80 marks. And then finally, you come here, you choose one, either uh, one question from the business ventures, that is number five, or from business roles, which is number, question number six. We're supposed to choose one. So, here we go. We start with our multiple choice questions. It is always from question one to five. These are multiple choice questions. As we're going to look at them, we are supposed to answer them. Look at alternatives so that you can choose the most appropriate equation. Majority of us don't read questions play, and we always make a lot of mistakes. It is very important for us to first read the question, understand what the examiner want from us, and then we look at the alternatives before we choose the most appropriate answer from the alternatives given. Okay, let's look at this. For example, question 1.2. 1.1 says the DAO serves as the constitution of the company. Yes, we are given alternatives. Like for example, we have that it is the initial public office, the initial public public offer serves as the constitution of the company. This is never there. It has never been one of the documents of the companies, and therefore it is wrong. So when you look at the memorandum of incorporation, definitely this is the most appropriate answer. You know why? Because when you look at, because whenever we are given uh, objective multiple choice questions, we are given a confuser and others which are so irrelevant. So because we are saying, this is not needed, this is irrelevant. Uh, what is most likely to be so close would have been a prospectus, but a prospectus is a document which invites the public to come and buy shares into a company. It's not all about, it has never served. It has never served. Sorry about that. It has never served as a constitution for the company. A prospect has invited the public to come and buy shares from company. Therefore, we have the memorandum of a company uh, incorporation. This gives rules and regulations, the role of every employee, every shareholder, our shares are going to be shared and even other 
aspects that controls discipline and even other duties, what, what, contracts, they are all here. It gives you what you're supposed to do. Job description and specification are within the memorandum of operation. Yes, we can look at question number two of the multiple choice, which says, Delta Bakeries Management wants to extend their brand into Australian market by looking at views opposing or supporting the change. This problem solving techniques technique is known as okay. Okay, question 1.2, 1.1.2 talks about problem solving techniques. Okay, let's start with the first problem solving technique, which is Delph technique. Okay, I want to remind you that when we want to use Delph uh, problem solving technique, this involves the use of experts. We, a company hires the experts who are given different questions, which has a problem on the questionnaire for the experts to fill to give us the resolutions to find to give us the findings or ways on how to solve the given problem in the company. Delft technique is not what we are looking at here because it talks about uh, experts and use of questionnaires when we are solving a problem. Delft technique is not applicable here because we are talking about views opposing and supporting a solution or a, an idea of change you understand so we are not taking this at all let's look at what we call brainstorming as their major alternative when we are using brainstorming we are using we we, we bring up all the major, all the stakeholders including employees we put a problem onto the board and then we come up with with ideas this is not about uh, employees discussing a problem solutions for a given problem therefore it's not a problem solving technique in the question here this is not what is required let's look at uh, what is known as uh, force field analysis under force field analysis, under force field analysis, the manager uh, tasks employees to identify different solutions for the given problem, as well as inviting them to give advantages and disadvantages of a given solution. Let's say, for example, we need to improve uh, sales. The sales had drop, dropped of recent, and we need to increase the uh, um, amount of goods, uh, total sales that the company makes. What should we do? Yes, for example, we have different alternatives. Could be called uh, market penetration which requires us to establish different branches into different geographical area. But we have to identify different advantages and then disadvantages of market penetration. I mean market, uh, market development, that was market development. We have to identify what are the advantages of doing market development, establishing different uh, branches or markets into different geographical locations. That is what you call market development. We look at we look at disadvantages or advantages of that. Then it could be because of market penetration, which talks about reducing the prices of the current products so that they look cheaper compared to our competitors, so that we can sell. So, uh. We look at advantages and disadvantages of such a market, uh, such a solution, and then we compare which one is better. And therefore, this one is what is most appropriate 
equation, I mean alternative C is the most appropriate answer for that aspect. Yes, so we don't need to look at this because the others are confused us. Look at question 1.1.3. This question three of the multiple choice, which says the business venture avenue where a business opts to pay for the use of an asset instead of owning it is known as uh, definitely this is not franchising because when we talk about franchising, when we talk about franchising, franchising you buy rights from the franchisor to or start a business start a business that is a same as that of the franchisor the fashion the ingredients the map everything must be similar to that of a franchisor this one is not that when you look at outsourcing this one a business is trying to use the services of another business uh, which is more skilled, which has more uh, ability to perform a function that can only do so that this business con concentrates on what can do better. For example, if it was a construction company, it may hire the services of an installation company to come and install electricity into a building yes that is what you call outsourcing you bring more technicians in, so that they help you complete your task that is outsourcing and this is not vending totally out it's not that it and then leasing leasing is the most appropriate here what is leasing in this regard we do lease we hire we buy ownership of a given business asset for a given period of time but a person who is the bona fide owner of that property is called the leaser the leasee is the person who's hiring it i mean you own it for a given period of time but the leaser will have will repossess his asset after a given period of time and this is automatically what the examiner was talking about yes for example uh, mk company can hire a building use a building for 45 years and then after that duration the bona fide owner of the building retains it that is it when you look at question two, it talks about employees of choice a limited conducted uh, conduct themselves with respect and maintain high standard of service. This is an example of governance. This is not right. It's wrong. It's a wrong option. It is an ethical behavior. We look at this. It is an ethical behavior. Let's look at this. Then there is what you call professional behavior. Uh, a, a, these are the most two more appropriate answers. Let's find out why are we choosing these ones and then we see what exactly is most appropriate. For example, the employees of choice limited conduct themselves with respect and maintain high standard of service. And definitely uh, it's ethical behaviors. If you are to explain what you call ethical behaviors, these are expected behaviors or from a person in a community, behaviors that are generally acceptable in the what? In the society. Those are what you call ethical behaviors well as professional behaviors. These are behaviors which are acceptable in the workplace. They include the way we conduct ourselves, uh, obeying to rules and regulations of the company, the code of conduct, the dressing code, and 
automatically. This is respecting employees, timely services, and this is exactly what the examiner wanted. This is exactly what the examiner wanted, and that is the exact answer. Okay, so here we go to our last part of the multiple choice question, which talks about meter associates. Has their directors jointly uh, liable for the debts of the business? This form of ownership is known as meter associates, has directors as directors jointly and severely liable for the debts of the business. Just a reminder, this is this we are talking about business ownership, forms of business ownerships, which you must be familiar with. What is a private company? This a private company is different from other forms of business ownership. For example, it's different from a sole proprietorship because under sole trade business, it's owned by one person. What about a partnership? Under that partnership business, few individuals start up a business, contribute capital, take part in day-to-day -day running of the business. And uh, that is different from what you call a private company. A private company is, is managed by board of directors who are given the mandate by shareholders to come and, uh, and run the business on their behalf. So it's so different from what you call public companies because when it is time to contribute and raise capital, it is only members, it is only members of a, a private company, shareholders that contribute capital, unlike public companies, which invite the public by drawing a prospectus to come and buy shares from the company. But under private companies, it's only shareholders that have to contribute more capital into the business. And uh, it is not in line with what is required here that the electors are not jointly liable the debts of the business. Okay, let's look at partnership. Partnership doesn't use directors. It's the shareholders or partners who take part in the today running of the business. What about personal liability companies, personal liability companies. Under personal liability companies, personal liability companies have the same characteristic, characteristics like what you call um, private companies. Uh, and for your information, the new act says that the directors of personal liability companies have an obligation to meet the debts and other liabilities sorry, of the business. Should these directors intentionally or participate in such losses or liabilities of, of the company? The directors are jointly liable. They are jointly liable for debts and other liabilities of the business. And that is what you call personal liability companies, personal liability companies. And uh, this was totally out. Non-profit organization was totally out. Partnership was totally out. And the confuser here was the private company should take note of that. Let's look at this next section of the question, which is question 1.2. Under this 
we are given a list of words and we are given as you can see a list of words are given in in here and we are given sentences that we are supposed to complete therefore we are completing sentences uh, using the given what words for example you can say the question says complete the following statements by using words in the list of table in the list below write only the words next to the question number that is 1.2.1 to 1.2.5 in the answer booklet look so how are we supposed to go about this before you answer any question from this point here please make sure that you read through you go through all these words and try to digest them understand what is the questionnaire in your own understanding try to remind yourself about what unlimited and this could be about liabilities then remind yourself about what we call a crisis remind yourself about what shareholders are you should read everything i mean read every terminology here which is given into a list which is in the list here limited liability yes intertrade we're supposed to read about them most of the words i want to remind you once again that they were always provided with you are always uh, provided with a, an answer and then it's a confuser. You must be very observant. When you are reading these questions, you must be very, very, very uh, observant so that you don't get confused by the confuser. Every statement here, every statement, every word from the list has got a confuser. It, there is a true answer and then one is confusing you must be very very careful when you come to answering questions for example look at this uh, this question hope and grace partners lost their personal assets when their business became insolvent their business has dash liability so class we, this can remind us of what is called, uh, uh, we can remind ourselves about characteristics of partnership business. Of course, hope and grace, they are in a partnership. They are in a partnership. So partnership businesses have unlimited liabilities. And what we call unlimited liability is when the debts and any financial obligations of the business can go or can affect the assets of the owners. They are, on, they are not limited. They are not limited to the, uh, the capital that was contributed to the business, no? Therefore, the answer here is unlimited. The answer is unlimited, unlimited uh, liability unlimited 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 liability unlimited liability is the answer here so that is there we go you can say this is question one alternative one this is alternative one excuse me this is alternative one. Alternative one is for unlimited. So we go to this question here. Short deadlines bring dash in the workplace. Short deadline bring dash in the workplace. We know that that when you are given a deadline that you all this workload is to be finished within the 
shortest period of time possible, is it likely to bring a change? I don't believe so. Does it bring directors, you know, globalization questionnaires, uh, limited catalog, share orders? No. Instead, it brings a crisis. It brings a crisis. This is answer two. It brings what? It brings a, a crisis. It brings about crisis. This is crisis which is caused by forcing employees to give answers within uh, to, to to do their work within the shortest period of time possible look at this a private a private company is managed by a board of change directors globalization and no it is no it's managed by a board of Lectors is managed by a board of is managed by a board of directors. It is managed by a board of directors. Yes, directors manage. This is three directors manage uh, private companies. Yes, who are given the mandate by. Shareholders, let's go to question 1.2.4. Blended coffee factory decided to use dash as as a dash as a research instrument to gathering information on how to improve quality of their products. We come here. What we have here? Research instruments is obviously none other than a questionnaire so a questionnaire is a research instrument that is used when we are gathering what information i can remind you what a questionnaire is this is an instrument that is used when you are collecting information from from our target market Yes, you make or should always make research by using questionnaire. It has a list of questions that must be responded to by the, uh, the prospective buyers, the ones you want to buy your products before you make a decision on the type of the product you are going to stock, on the price, on the color, the location, and any other business decision that you would like to use. The questionnaire is very important. So this is a questionnaire this is a questionnaire here our answer is supposed to be a questionnaire research instrument is called a questionnaire questionnaire yeah master the spelling yes so we go to the next one a new trend that enables a business to trade in other countries is known as a new trend that is used that enables businesses to trade in other countries is not as yes we have to, is not share orders is not change definitely it's not a catalog is not limited is not inter trade definitely we have two aspects which are very important here globalization and intertrade is a confuser. Intertrade is confuser. And the answer is globalization. The answer is globalization. Globalization is the new trend we are talking about here. It is called globalization. Globalization. Very important. Produce restrictions under globalization are removed. There is clear communication between countries. There is free trade between countries. There is a free movement of factors of production, labor, entrepreneurship. Everything just moves across the world. Trade, uh, transport, communication, 
is possible between countries, and that is comes with the globalization. Yes, I think we are there. That uh, that marks the head, the end of that section. Okay. Let's look at the next part of section A. So far, we have successfully scored our point marks. We are left with this last part section of choosing a description, choose a description from column B that matches a term in column, in column A. Yes, we are supposed to look at a description from, from B that will match the terminology given in, 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 in column A. How do we deal with this section? First of all, look at these terminologies. Look at these terms. Read them. Try to create sense out of them. Try to create sense. Understand what your realities are. Find out what the right, the right approach, what it is, and find out what sole trader, who a sole trader is. Remind yourself about creative thinking, read and try to digest what securities are. Yes, that's what you're supposed to know before you start handling the question. Having looked at section A, I mean uh, column A, then go to column B and then start uh, reading each statement, each description one by one so that you, you can find out whether it is it has any of the term it affects or any of the term it corresponds with or any of the term it tries to describe yes look at this a process of finding the correct the correct strategy to respond to a problem uh, b chooses and looks for what is different c that is very important. Try to find out what it means. Find out whether there is any terminology that is described here. Uh, uh, is This is offered by share, shareholders of the company as opposed to the company itself. And what is that? We must then you try to consist somewhere. There's something which creates sense here. D, amount of money the business owner wants for the good for the for the good trade name. Yes, I know. It feels like there's something from the terms that it is trying to correspond with. Read before you give the answer. Try to read all of the descriptions because there could be a most appropriate one. Yes. For example, look at it. A tax is paid according to personal capacity. Uh -huh. Tax is paid according to personal what? Capacity. Yes. Then you will try to understand what it is. Yes. Let's go to another uh, description F amount of money made as a payment the franchiser by the franchisee okay then you shall come to see what are they trying to mean what are these people trying to mean yes there are some payments here example realities each other payment is here it's not there then therefore we may think about this let's first go through other uh, descriptions here uh, chooses and looks for what is right uh-huh I think this is in line to certain terminology here. Chooses what is what is uh, what is uh, what is right. It's something. It it rhymes so well. It tries to describe the rights uh, rights the rights approach. The right approach. Okay, it comes that. Let's see whether we shall find. So we try to correlate the two to see whether the two are matching before we go to the next one safety offered by business to its customers safety offered to businesses 
offered by the business to its safety offered by the business to its bring business out to its customers to its customers yes the tax is paid according to profits made the tax is paid according to profits made the tax is paid according to profits made is there anything related this description from the tar column of terms no we don't see anything there you can come here and say a process of putting facts together in a new and original way yeah there's something i saw here okay we have something in that relationship which is creative thinking okay let's start again after going through those aspects we can still go back and find out what is our most appropriate answer don't ever make mistake by choosing the answer before going through all the alternatives given for example loyalty here we are given loyalties uh, a loyalty is the amount is the amount of money made as a payment of the franchisor by the franchisee okay i want to remind you once again that when we want to use a business a business image a business skill a business name we take uh, that kind of uh, we are supposed to pay a fee from a person who has that right which who is the franchisor the franchisor will give us rights to use a business name to use the business skills to use the business goodwill to use everything that the business uses the production methods and anything related to that and a person who buys the franchise is called the franchisee it's called the franchisee the franchisee go into an agreement which is known as the franchise the franchise a franchise is an agreement which authorizes the or the franchisee to use the production methods tactics name of the franchisor and you were now after you taking up the uh the franchise you are supposed to pay a, a fund you are supposed to pay a fee a franchise fee known as the the realities and this is our answer so for 3 1.3.1 alternative is supposed to be supposed to be f supposed to be f answer so uh, when we are reading our description here the right the right approach chooses what is right chooses and looks for what is right or for what is right the right approach chooses uh, chooses what is chooses and looks for what is right and this is our alternative g right g on this question here right 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 g right g here as the answer for our alternative so it is g here okay let's look at a sole trader a sole trader is a person who starts a business alone he owns it he faces all the liabilities of the business a sole trader uh, a sole trade business is easy to operate that is in terms of management decisions are made alone by by the single person who owns the business 
And to make it very important is that in terms of taxation, taxes are only payable by the sole trader himself. You get that by the sole trader himself, not a business. And only that comes, depends on how much money you make. It's a kind of income tax which is charged on a sole trader, not as a company tax which is charged on a business. I don't know whether you get me. So a sole trader is charged as income, is charged an income which is called uh, is is taxed from his income, which is income tax, but not as a company tax. Uh, you, you, you get that? Not from his business. Taxes are not charged from his business. Yes, I think you get that. That gives us the best alternative. That gives us the best alternative as as uh, as E according to personal capacity the best alternative here is e best alternative is e yes let's look at the next question having passed this very well we look at the next question which is about creative thinking if we can remind ourselves about what creative thinking is Creative thinking is the process of coming up, up with something new, original, and different from what has been what, what has been existing. So under creative thinking is needed by all businessmen. With the creative thinking, we always come up with something new, something which is different, something which is original from our competitors so that we can provide the customer satisfaction. Our customers must be satisfied with what you offer. Our customers, our services must beat up the competition. We must take the market share from the market potential from our competitor. Therefore, you are supposed to be to carry out creative thinking as opposed to what you call routine thinking. So what is creative thinking in this regard here? So it is a process of putting facts together in a new and original way. So our answer here is J. Our answer is J. So J is the most appropriate answer here. J is the most appropriate answer. OK, we are left with only one option which is securities 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 and these are for securities here our best alternative for securities are offered by shareholders of the company as opposed the company itself the best alternative is c the best alternative for securities is C. The best alternative is in C. Okay. Uh, we have successfully completed our section A and the score is 30. I want to assure you if you want to be a successful business learner. You have to work on your section. It is very important that you should always be knowing on how to answer section. That sticks talked about the skills. One, make sure that you read the question if you uh, read alternatives, all the alternatives given fully, and then finally you choose the most appropriate one so that you can. The best way to get to master section A is by keep practicing question papers. You keep practicing question papers. Keep practicing question papers. The more you practice, the more 
we get used to these questions. They are always repeated. Okay, let's go to section B. Section B, and it is we are always given like to every standard equation paper, we are given three questions, and we are supposed to choose only two. Each question carries 40 marks. So whenever we commit ourselves to any given question paper, I mean any given question, we are working for 40 marks. Try as much as possible. First, read through all the questions, the three questions, before you make a commitment to answer a, a, a given question. First, understand which one is easier for you. We are not looking for heroes here. Those who have done the most complicated questions know we always take a learner who has answered the question right there. We are not looking for who has attempted the most difficult question, but we take the candidate, a learner who has answered questions correctly. So therefore, before you commit yourself to a given question from the alternative, just find out which one is easier for you, depending on how you prepared yourself. Okay, for this matter, I my my reason here is to give you answers or take you through these different questions and try to see which one is the most, uh, I mean, we try to get used to these different questions so that when you find it again or any other time or someone, you're able to know it and able to answer it. Okay, look at this. Question two comes from business ventures and it wants that specifically it is looking at what you call forms of business ownership. It wants us to name any five aspects that must be included in the prospectus. Okay. Remind you, they want us to name, just name. The nature of the question will should guide you on how you are going to flame, to phrase and build your answer. They are just giving us the question which says name. Name is a first order uh, uh, question. I mean, it is a first order requirement that wants us to give just state outline. We are not going to be elaborated as we are going to look at other different questions. So therefore, we are going to be answering. We are going to be answering these questions uh, I mean, giving answers by just naming, just in a, a stating. So, name any five aspects that must be included in the prospectus. How do we deal with this section? The most important aspect of this, on how to deal with this, this question, you are supposed to go to your uh, uh, answer sheet, for example, and then, first of all, you number. Say, first, say, first of all, is identify. Say, I am going to answer. This is this part is always. So before you even go there, make sure that you start every question on it on 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 its own page. Don't mix up uh, section A with section B. Start uh, section B, question two on a fresh a fresh page. So write section 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 write section section B, and you are supposed to also number question two point one, and the question says name aspects 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 that must be must be included 
in a prospectus in a prospectus. So that is what we are supposed, first of all, no, it is very important. Number, numbering is very important, is a key factor here. If we don't know how to number, we are going to lose a lot of marks. We would have worked for no good reason. It is also important to give headings if you don't, if you cannot be affected. If your speed is fine, give a heading. And the underlying, it is going to make you work very smart and very clean. You see? And then we are supposed to start giving our answers in a blade form. For example, I look at this. What, what is a prospectus, by the way? A prospectus, this is a document which is drawn by the company to invite the public to buy shares from that very what from that very company that is listed in, at in JSE Johannesburg Security Exchange Market we are supposed to invite the public to tell them that look this is what we have we have this business and we think it will work for you so any person who wants to buy shares from your business needs to know a lot and a lot that is needed must be drafted in what we call a prospectus. A prospectus, remember, is a document which is drawn to invite the public to buy shares from a public company. Therefore, first of all, by virtue of its description, a prospectus must have the name it must have the name of the company, the name of the company. Yes, it must have the company name. Yes, it must have the company name. Yes, so that you are advertising a business which has a name. It must be known. It, it, you must indicate, it must have the company overview company overview company over you yes what do we mean by this we mean we mean the vision the vision of the business the mission the mission of the business the goals of the business etc that is the company's what a business so that those who want to subscribe for shares they understand what they are going in for how do they see that company in future time besides that you are supposed to inform the prospector, the the your the buyers of shares, those who want to buy shares about the product in which the business is specializing in. You must know before you buy, you have to understand the product or a service that is offered by that business, the service offered by that what business. If not so. You are supposed also to show your clients your marketing strategy, your marketing strategy through what you call the market analysis. How are you going to market your business? Market analysis. Yes. Market what? Analysis. That means how are you going to market your pro product? Which strategy of marketing? Are you going to use? Are you going to go through social media? Are you going to use a, a electronic media like radio stations and TV? Or you are going to use printed media like newspapers and billboards? What are you going to use? Journals, etc. What are you going to use? Besides that, you are supposed to inform 
the public about your management team who are those people that manage the business who are those people that you do manage the business excuse me who are those people that manage the business besides that how much of income that is needed look at the financial position financial requirements of your business so that the people know understand what they are going in for besides that tell them about the company assets company assets how much how what does the company possess do they have transport cars buses buildings what do they have assets of the company assets must be listed in the prospectus so that while whoever wants to buy shares must understand what is needed there besides that uh you are supposed to tell your expected clients or shareholders those who are supposed to buy shares about the cash flow how does money come in cash flow how does money come in and how do you spend on your daily basis besides that we're supposed to indicate profits you expected to make or you do make as of that time and again tell them about losses and how you expect to deal with losses entrepreneurs investors don't want to deal in businesses where losses are a lot you get that so therefore that is one of some of the factors that you should look at that when we are trying to draft the prospectors besides that you can also think about the purpose of the offer share capital required shares issued property owned preliminary expenses those first expenses and that one you should not give less than five coins under this because uh the question has max of five and you have to remember that it was a first order question of naming when it is of this type they are uh, each point you give will give you one mark so you have to be very careful when you are dealing with such questions from the first order section let's look at question 2.2 which talks about uh, outlining the characteristics of a partnership outlining the characteristics of the characteristics of a partnership business remind you once again numbering is very important first give a number it is question 2.2 and we are saying characteristics characteristics of partnership of the partnership very important yes for those who are good at writing faster it is important to write these smaller headings so that they hope the examiner someone who's going to mark to understand what you are writing about it is also very important because when you when during examination it is very easy to forget the question you are attempting on several occasions i've seen learners mismatching uh, answers uh, putting them in a wrong on a wrong number you see it is very easier for a candidate for a person to write uh, characteristics of partnership on uh, on question 2.1 because of misnumbering very risky it's very dangerous you would have worked for no reason so therefore it is very important to write those smaller headings because they will always remind you 
of what you are attempting. I think that is clear. I don't want anyone to lose any mark because of that carelessness. That's why uh, you should give simple headings. They take less time. Don't be scared of writing them. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is a partnership, by the way? A partnership is an agreement, is an agreement, is an agreement between in two two or more people two or more people two or more people or partners or the black spot partners actually between two or more partners no if it's not the spelling you can collect it between two or more Partners in two or more partners, well, yes, for a given in two or more partners. Yes, we write an agreement. When we start a business, we become partners. Therefore, we write, uh, we write it, we draft it as an agreement. And two of us are supposed to contribute capital Partners contribute. Partners contribute capital. Contribute capital. Contribute capital. Uh, capital. They contribute skills. Contribute skills. Time and effort. And effort to run, run a business, to run a what? Business. That is what you call a, pass, a partnership, isn't it? We pay, we are supposed to contribute to money. That's what you call a partnership. So, uh, I want to remind you once again that when we are de dealing with a partner in a partnership business, both or people jointly own a business. If they jointly, partners, he said, partners jointly own what? Own a business. Because they jointly own businesses, they are both or they are both or they jointly face my abilities of the business my abilities my abilities and debts debts of the business. Yeah, that very important. So when there is any aspect of a loss or a debt, each partner, every partner is liable to such a risk. Profits and losses are shared. Profits and losses. Profits. And losses. and losses are shared by the partners. And the partners, very important to understand. It's not like a sole trade business whereby all profits are enjoyed by one person they are put on the head of one person, the sole owner. Okay, I want to remind you once again that uh, partners pay tax in their personal capacity. Partners pay 
access in the personal in their personal capacity capacity it's not the business to pay a tax but those partners who receive their money a tax is charged from them a tax is charged from them and hence uh, whoever gets the the more income you get the more uh, taxes you pay unlike under other types of businesses like public companies and private companies where a company itself is supposed to pay a tax in terms of company tax or corporate tax. Hey, let's look at this line here. Let's look at this line here. Nothing in context. Nothing in short. We are supposed to read the scenario in equation 2.2. Mm -hmm. which says read the scenario below and answer the questions that follow see bongani communication that is private companies limited ltd bongani communication is a well known for installing high quality communication technology more capital can be raised by a company than in an individual. Tax is paid on the taxable income of the company, and the companies pay secondary tax on dividends distributed to shareholders. Auditing of financial statements is voluntary. Auditing of financial statements is voluntary. So we are supposed to put advantages on private of a private company from the scenario above. What 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 two advantages of private company from that scenario? It is very important um, dear learners to first understand well with the characteristics of private companies before you attempt such question always remember your characteristics of private what companies or private companies as a form of business ownership look at this bongani is well known for installing high quality communication technology more capital can be raised by a company than by an individual because it is a private company meaning that very many people can raise more capital tax is paid on taxable income of a company of the company and the companies pay secondary tax on dividends distributed it is a disadvantage auditing of the financial statement is voluntary. That is very important. It is an advantage. So we are required. We are required to quote. We are required to quote advantages of private of a private company from the scenario. So we, we are going to highlight in this. Let's first highlight with the highlight in this. So we are saying that uh, more capital, more capital can be raised by a company than by an individual. That's very important because very many people contribute capital compared to some trades. We are receiving a lot of capital. Uh -huh. We are looking at also another important aspect is that auditing of financial statements is voluntary. This is also very important. Auditing is voluntary. Yeah. Of financial statements is voluntary. What do we say quoting? It is very important also to understand 
or the statement or, 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 or the requirement of the question. When we say court advantage, we are supposed to write a full sentence that has got the answer that we need. More capital can be raised by a company, and this is what is needed. The quoting our quote here saying more capital, more capital, right as it is that more, more capital can be raised. Can be raised by a company. A company than an individual. An individual. And an individual. Write a full sentence. Don't write a few words or a few of the things you want. You have to write a full line of it. And another point is that auditing, auditing, of financial statements is voluntary. It's not by force making public companies voluntary. It is by law in public companies to carry out financial auditing. And that makes it very expensive. You see, that is what it, you would have gotten these two marks. See? So then we are asked to give, explain the other advantages of private companies, other advantages of private companies. Okay, let's go and look at it. It is question 2.2.2. 2.2. .2 .2. Two point two other advantages, right? Other advantages of uh, public private the advantages of private companies. Private companies. What is important here? What is important is that never again give us the same answers as the one was quoted from the scenario. It will be repeating yourself and the examiner will not give you a mark for that. Always come up with different answers which you have you studied from from your your notes book. Let's look at it. Let's look at these advantages. Uh, let me remind you once again we can get these answers from characteristics of private companies. What are these characteristics of private companies? Unlike public companies, private companies are set up by individuals who come together to start up a business. And if they are supposed to raise capital, capital is raised by members, by shareholders within the private company. They are, no one is supposed to raise capital by inviting other shareholders. That is not like that. You get that? The under private, private companies, private companies, uh, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. Is not necessary to appoint point and for the term. It's not self appoint and audit. It is a private company. It's not a public what company. It's not, this makes it 
this makes it cheaper compared to public companies where an auditor is a must that must come uh, and uh, audit the books of account, isn't it? Besides that, you are going to find out that uh, uh, financial statements, financial, financial statements, statements, are not provided to the public. They are not, they are not provided to the public. No, they are just given uh, to all the shareholders. It's not of public use. There's, it's not of public demand like public companies. You see. Besides that, you are going to find out that shareholders, share, shareholders, the owners of the business, the shareholders, uh, can appoint, appoint, can appoint, uh, they can appoint. You can appoint a board of directors, a board of directors, of directors to run the business, run the business. You and this is very important. You, you you choose a board of directors who understand how the business runs so this is very important besides that uh, a private company operates operates as a separate legal entity a separate legal entity what does this mean this means that it has rights to show, it can show, or be should, or be should in courts of law. If there is any case of, in case of any this honored contract with that so you are free the service provider is free to take this company private company to the court of law in case it dishonored any con its contractual obligation not an individual not an employee not even uh, uh, directors of the company not even shareholders so that is how good it is that it has a legal entity, it exists as a legal person if it is a private company. Besides that, there is continuity, continuity of the business, meaning that it can continue to exist of a business in case of the death of one of the members or shareholders. You get that? Even if one of the members die, the business will continue to exist. Okay? So besides that, you are going to find out uh, liabilities. There is limited liabilities. Limited liabilities. The business, business owners, their assets are safe because it expresses what you call uh, limited uh, liabilities. So like uh, if a business faces any losses, it's only the assets, uh, the cash, the capital that was contributed that is affected, but not even uh, not even the assets of 
uh, the shareholder that is not within the business, unlike unlimited liability. Besides that, the board of directors, board of board of directors, board of directors are also liable, are also personally liable. Hey, they are also personally liable to debts of the business, of the business in case, business in case they were found um, involved uh, willingly, willingly into such such debts. Mm -hmm. So if a, a if a director misuses company funds, is he liable? Is liable to payments of such what? This that is a personal. That's what you call a private company. You are supposed to give not less than two points to get six marks. I knew any other any other important factors to mention, but a few. Let's look at another another part of the question the questions paper another part says uh, to discuss discuss uh, to discuss the legal discuss the legal requirements discuss the legal requirements of of the company discuss the legal requirements of that of the name of the company, legal requirements of the name of the company. That is the most important in this question here. Legal requirements. Legal requirements of the name of the name of the company. Legal, by law, businesses must have a name. And that name to be legally binding, to be legally acceptable, it must comply to certain requirements. It must comply to certain requirements. So this prohibits entrepreneurs from just naming their businesses without following the legal the criteria of such business. Look at this. Let's look at this. Let's look at how should the name of the business look like that is legally binding? What should, how should the legal, what, how should the name that is legally binding look like? Let's look at it. It is question 2.3. Question 2.3. I told you you should always remember to write the number. Uh, question number, it is two. And what is the question? The question says, you want us to discuss the legal requirements, legal requirements of legal requirements of the name of the name of the company. Legal requirements of the name of the company. Is this very important? Legal requirements of the name of the But we need to see how should the name of the company, what should it have? First of all, the name of the company. The name of the company must be original. Must be the name of the company must be 
it must be must be original we must be original with that what does this imply it must not be a, it must not be like similar to any other business yeah? to any other business name it must not be misleading it must not be misleading Some people give names to their businesses which cannot fully explain what the business is all about. Just gives a name to the business without identifying the purpose, without telling us what exactly the business does. Did that the company name must appear on all company documents. Company name. appear must appear on all company documents company documents like letter ads on the contracts on every document the company name must be there mm -hmm. uh, Reserving a name for the company is the first step. You must reserve. Reserve the name of the company. With the registrar. With registrar of companies, with the registrar of companies, okay, that so that no one else should take up that name. It's not compulsory though. It's very important. Your name must the company name must not be similar. It's not be similar. Any other any other business name yes very important don't give us a name that already exists you will confuse uh buyers you will confuse buyers people with your competitors product besides that make sure that the name is not offensive not offensive name Give us a name that is not what offensive or a name that promotes hatred or the name that is not violent. There are some people give names which are very cruel and promote a division, and that should not be that one of the company. So that is it. To mention, but if you let's look at another question in respect to time. We are given on question 2.4, we are supposed to be given, we are given a scenario, we are given a scenario, and we are supposed to answer questions that are following. Look at this Yola Laundry YW is the company we are talking about. Yola Housekeepers is well known for providing round services. Is well known for providing round what? Services. The management of Yola Laundry won't reduce labor costs and cut overhead expenses. What do they do if they wanted to reduce labor costs and cut overhead expenses? So what they did was to Hire. They hired Tammy housekeepers. Oh, Tammy housekeepers was brought into the equation purposely to clean their offices. Wow. They hired these people because I believe these people are so good in cleaning offices. Okay. The other one were housekeepers, but they couldn't 
you all are we are housekeepers, but they are not good at cleaning offices. You or maybe they were so busy. So they had to hire, they wanted to concentrate on other bees on other parts of uh, housekeeping. So they hired another uh, company called Tami Housekeeping specifically to clean their offices. Okay, let's see. Identify the type of business venture applicable in this scenario and motivate your answer. Okay, we are looking at a situation of a company doing its own business or do, do completing its work, but again, it is hiring another company. The type of a business avenue looked about here is called outsourcing. It's called outsourcing. Out, outsourcing. Sourcing. It's called auto sourcing. Outsourcing here, yeah, like a construction company that just specializes in building, finds out that in the due course it needs to install electricity. That process of hiring uh camel help, uh, uh electricity installation company work with sunny construction is what you call out sourcing uh the motivation is the reason is that they hired in quote it directly they hired they hired hired housekeepers they hired the tummy We had the Tami housekeepers. We had the Tami housekeepers to do what? To clean their offices, to clean their offices. See this. This is always two marks for business avenue identified, and then the motivation they always give a mark, a sub mark giving a total mark, max mark, max mark as three. You can see this. Okay, we are supposed to explain the advantages of a business avenue identified in 2.4.1. And the advantages are of outsourcing. That's two, 2.4, 2.4. Two point two point two point four point two. They are talking about advantages of outsourcing. Advantages of outsourcing as a business event. Very important. You are doing this, but you hire another business another venture to come and do a certain task on your behalf. Very important. Why? Because it, it can be used. It can be used uh, when we have got a, a situation of a high, sta high staff turnover. If your staff is continuously leaving your business, you can hire another business to come and work for you. Yes? So therefore, it is a limit. It is a temporary limit, temporary solution for a high staff turnover, for a high staff turnover. So when these people are leaving, you can hire the others to do your work for a while until when you sort out the major problem for the why the staff uh, is leaving so that uh, you, you you hire those people besides that it is very important because it allows your business allows 
uh, it allows allows the business allows a business to focus on a major activity on its major activity major activity yes major activity actually it could be activities and give other activities and minor on other on others by hiring by outsourcing very important by outsourcing very important by outsourcing very important you should always outsource so that when you keep on or measuring on what you can do better and then you bring an, another activity you hire someone else to do for you so that work can be done effectively you get that uh, uh, besides that it allows it allows seasonal 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 employment is possible seasonal employment or seasonal contracts is possible is possible yes is possible you get that because uh such people such employees can be used seasonally in a case a job is available on a seasonal basis it's very important you don't need uh you don't need to have such people on a permanent basis because very soon soon after completing that task they will be redundant it is very important uh to 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 hire these people seasonally uh, besides that look at this another point is that it is you can hire skilled employees skilled experts the experts can be hired can be and be hired for a specific work for a specific a specific work of their specialization of their specialization i don't know whether you get this very important there are some people who know, who specialize who specialize in electrical installation and that is what they know best so for you is your company which is building and construction you hire these other people who are so good who are skilled in installation and can do work more efficient efficiently and effectively you did that so a business has access to resources uh, a business has access to business business has access to resources and equipments that come with that um with out sourced company brackets put employees these people come with their tools and equipment it is it okay the minimum points here we are required three if they are fully explained and they would give you a lot of a lot of marks let's look at another question which is question 2.5 question 2 
2.5, which asks us, which requires us uh, uh, to give reasons, discussing reasons, reasons, reasons why, why entrepreneurs may decide to buy, may decide to buy existing businesses. Instead of starting new businesses, why do these people choose to buy the already existing businesses? Very interesting. These people, they find out that it is for them, it makes sense to purchase already existing businesses instead of starting their own businesses. Some people have found it very peaceful and profitable to start businesses, to buy already existing businesses. What could be reasons? Yes, such an existing business which has been in the operation uh, may be having already they have, have a well established customer base. Customer base. Get that? Yes, there is no need to look for customers. They are already existing. So therefore, very important you purchase already existing business as long as it has its clients you are going to have just continue operating besides that the business may have may have already existing suppliers existing suppliers instead of starting from the scratch uh, starting from the scratch, looking for the newer suppliers, the business already has its its suppliers. Therefore, it is of no good use to start a business which already have its existing supplier. To get new suppliers may be very complicated, but just to start from scratch, look for new suppliers. It's not easy. Just buy already existing sub business which has got its existing supplier. Besides that, the business has existing businesses, existing existing uh, businesses may be having may be having uh, have established staff, established Staff, you see, the staff which are already experienced, get that it is easier to start with them instead of looking for the new start, new, uh, new clients. I mean, new employees. It's better uh, to do that to to start with the already existing staff. No need to do market research. No need to do to carry out market research, market research, because the way the existing business has done market research and they can give you uh, all the details before they leave you to, uh, they leave you to run the business. So such things and many other uh, advantages prompt entrepreneurs to start to buy existing businesses instead of uh, instead of uh, starting new businesses instead of starting new businesses is better you just go on with the way they existing businesses with other advantages look we are not talking about these advantages today today we are looking at the advantages okay class we need to look at something else uh, businesses uh, on question number three question number three you may have 
taken it as your question of choice. And it is specific here, it's about business roles. After successfully scoring too much, a lot of marks there, you are supposed to come and also choose another question, which is question three. It could be either question three or question four. And you go, you see how you can answer it. As usual, I don't expect any person to choose question three when he cannot attempt 3.1 because it is always simple. It is a very fast order question that requires us to state, to mention, to name, outline. Those are very simple verbs that we, we just need to work on. You should always read and always know them. So our question three talks about crisis in a workplace. Crisis in a workplace. And they want us to give examples of crisis, just to name, just to name a crisis. This is a situation that may make the, uh, the business to a stand still. Unprepared occurrence in a business that makes work to be on, sta on standstill. There are so many things that may make our work to be on stand still. For example, this we may be, it could be loss of property due to fire. Fire causes a crisis in a workplace. This is one of the causes of the crisis in a workplace. It could be theft of an asset or equipment, theft of and of the of an equipment sometimes you go to work there is a tool or an equipment that is supposed to be used but it has been stolen mm -hmm. it could be sometimes stock sometimes someone could have taken stock and if it causes a crisis it could be breakdown of a machine breakdown of machinery breakdown of machine the machine has broken down nothing we have to do it creates it creates a, a, a crisis it could be cause of illness of a very important employee of a, a very important employee in a workplace of an employee in a workplace this is very dangerous mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes it may make put work on a standstill and it causes panic, a crisis that is irreplaceable that cannot be solved immediately. It could be because two or more employees are having a conflict. They are fighting each other, making work to move slowly. Could be that is because of conflicts amongst employees, conflicts within. And then employees, employees may be having certain issues between themselves and they make delays too much. So such things, such reasons could be one of the causes of conflicts in the workplace, I mean, uh, as a crisis in the workplace, uh, a drop in revenue, drop in sales. Like we are selling less than what we used to sell could be one of the causes of the crisis. Besides that, shortage of supply, decline in supply where we are no longer producing enough. What is the cause? It could cause a crisis in the workplace, a situation of shortage, a situation of uh, uh, absence of what to do, what to sell and putting work on standstill would bring about a crisis as noted. Let's look at another question 3.2, which requires us to explain uh, the differences between routine thinking, the differences between routine thinking and creative thinking. Very important. Uh, after identifying this, what look at the key aspects in the question. The question requires us to identify uh, differences between 
uh, differences between routine thinking and the creative thinking. So it is question, don't forget to number question 3.2 differences between routine thinking, routine thinking, thinking, routine thinking, and creative thinking, and creative, creative thinking. Very important. So to remind you once again, questions of differences, they require us, they require us at least to draw a table to tabulate. Look very smart when you draw a table. Your work will look more smart and organized compared to the other candidate, the, the other learner who's writing in a disorganized way. The layout order matters a lot because our subject can be marked with impression. How you impress, in place, how you, you organize your work is very important. So it is therefore important to write differences in tabula, tabula, table form table form and say routine thinking, routine thinking, and then maybe you this you draw a table and say creative thinking. Very important thinking. It's not compulsory, but very important because it creates an impression of someone who goes to class compared to someone who is a street, uh, I can say a street candidate or a street learner who is not attempting things according to the teacher's direction. Okay, let's look at this. Uh, what is routine thinking? Routine thinking, this is doing the same thing, doing, doing uh, the same thing, same thing, Expecting, expecting a different results, different results, results. You see, expecting different results. This is very, very bad in businesses. We are in a business which requires we are in a situation where we are supposed to come up with a lot of new things, new ideas, yes, something new and original. See, it is uh, what you call a creative thinking is what is required. See, it is a process of coming up with new idea, a process of coming up, of coming up, with new ideas, new ideas to solve a problem, solve a problem, solve a problem. This is what you call creative thinking. That is what you call creative thinking as opposed to training in the so sometimes we find ourselves using using past decisions, past decisions to solve current problems, decisions to solve uh, to solve solve current problems, current problems that is called routine thinking. They're supposed to come up with a new way of uh, doing things, which is called uh, creative thing thinking. Mm -hmm. New and different ways, different uh, ways, ways of solving problems, of solving what? Solving problems. That is what you call, 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 
uh, that is what you call creative thinking, very important. So you should always master the two, routine thinking, sticking the old way of doing things. Creative thinking is coming up with something new, original and different, and it is very important in the development of the businesses. Okay, let's look at the next question from question number three. We are given a business scenario of big fair wholesalers, big fair wholesalers, BFW, big fair wholesalers that has hired employees and it treats them fairly. Get that? Big fair wholesalers focuses on developing a moral compass for decision making. Okay? It focuses, this company focuses on developing a moral compass on moral compass for decision making. So the management of big fair wholesalers believes that every act should be judged based on the effect it has on others. Every uh, it uh, every it, it believes that. It believes that uh, it believes that every that every act should be judged based on the effects effect it has on others. Look at this, very interesting. Besides that, they also conform to a set of values that are morally acceptable. They conform. They conform. A set of values we conform we conform a set of we also conform to the set of values that are morally acceptable yes in where in business yeah let's look at what do they need what's the question go to examples of ethical uh, what two examples of ethical? What two examples of ethical uh, ethical behaviors from the scenario? What two examples of ethical behaviors from the scenario? So look. So the first one, the first one, the first part is that uh, the first one is. B B F B F W focuses focuses on developing focuses on developing focuses on developing a moral compass a moral Compass. Compass for decision making for decision making. Two. Uh, this they also confirm. They also. So confirm. A set of values, set of values, set of values that are morally that are, are morally acceptable. Acceptable. Just remind you what ethics are. Ethics are set, set of values that are morally acceptable in the community. Yes, that is what we call uh, ethics. Besides that, ethics act as a moral compass, a moral compass for decision making. Before you make any decision, you have to ask yourself, is what I'm doing morally upright? Does it conform to community norms, rules and regulations, values? Is it fair? 
in the eyes of those who are seeing it. Is it right? It is. So that's, those are what you call ethical behaviors. So there is what you call another question asks us to explain what the management of, explain to the management of BFW, the common good approach, the common good approach as a theory of ethics, the common good approach as a theory of ethics, the common good approach as a theory of what? Common good approach as a theory of ethics. Here, I want you to take a note of it. Very important. You need to know what it means. Yes. Now people are going to say, oh, what a word. That is very huge. It's not very common, no. Something which is very easy, simple to understand. It is our question 3.32. I want to make it easier for you. Uh, what does this mean? The common good approach theory of ethics, it focuses on ensuring it focuses a common talking about common talking about common good common good uh, good approach theory good approach what approach theory common good what approach what theory what does it look at what does it say what does the common good approach theory mean first of all understand uh it focuses on the concept that it focuses on ensuring focuses on ensuring ensuring that ensuring that the business values the business the business business values the business values and norms and norms are in line are in line with with society in line with with ethical principles of the society ethical principles of the society. So what is done in the business must not be different whatsoever with what is known in the society. You get that? So the, so the business must not be a separate entity from the community. What it thinks that is ethical must also be ethical to the society. Mm -hmm. It also emphasizes that the common good approach emphasizes that it recognizes, it recognizes, it recognizes, recognizes that it recognizes that that uh, values values the value from country what is good in england may not be taken as important or good in usa as well as in south africa so that is what you call the common good approach theory besides that this approach this approach to ethics assumes that uh, this, this appro approach this approach this approach to ethics ethics, ethics 
this approach to FBs. This approach ethics. Oh, excuse me, this approach to ethics shows that it assumes that a society comprises individuals comprises comprises of individuals comprises of individuals whose own good own good is extremely linked is extremely linked or connected to the good of the community to the what a person looks for as something is very important to him it is as well as good to him and the community so the personal chess is a community goal a, com a personal goal is a community goal. that is what it means yes that is <coughs> what it means okay let's look at another question here next question let's look at Another question which talks about the C. Oh, I know done with this. They wanted us to give at least two, but we have given more than two. Let's look at question 3.4, which asks us to discuss the advantages of creative thinking. Advantages of creative thinking. At least a minimum of three questions must be uh, in points must be given and the question is 3.4 okay. point four advantages of creative thinking Is it good to cut out to have creative thinking in a workplace? Do you think uh, businesses should encourage creative thinking? What are those advantages that comes with creative thinking? Whenever we come up with something new, different and unique compared to our competitors, we are likely <coughs> to get advantages. For example, a complex problem may be solved. Solving complex problems. Complex problems. See? Wait, because we think out of the box, we come up with something new, a problem that is affecting the business that is too big, it can be done, it can be solved with a lot of these inventions. It leads to new inventions. New, it leads to new inventions. Come up with new inventions. We can discover new things and even innovations. And this will improve the standards of living. So it can also give competitive advantage. Advantage to the business 
over the competitors' advantages, competitive advantage in the business over over the competitors. See, because you have come up with something new and different, the competitors will struggle to match up your ability and you always stay above them. We're going to take the larger market share. So, so it gives leads, uh, it increases confidence of employees, increases employees' confidence. Confidence as they have come up with something very new. Confidence for sure, not competence. Confidence. Confidence. Employees, employers, confidence, confidence, yes, because they have managed to come up with something new and different. Very important for creative thinking. Uh, besides that, it leads to positive attitude. Leads to positive attitude in the business. In the business. Now, the employees will look at themselves as they are can do whatever comes their way. There are so many others which you can think about. <clears throat> Very important. You can easily come up. Creativity is very important in the workplace. But you should always think about our usual answers, increasing profitability, increasing profitability, uh, productivity, increasing the customer satisfaction, increasing uh, what you call um, and I, and I, it increases what you call a market share, larger market share, and the a competitive advantage, things of the, that kind, you see. So you should, there are always some common answers which must be properly discussed, but linked, if they are linked properly to the question, they give us the most brilliant <clears throat> answers of all time. So that is it. With. Okay, I think you are seeing the scenario. The scenario talks about Brenda Nails, Brenda's Nails Boutique. Brenda Nails Boutique has been affected by new post COVID techniques of marketing their services and B and B advertisement. Strategy is now depending on advanced online communication. The new nail salons are now entering the market and introducing new products. We are supposed to identify two external causes of change that have affected B and B, and we're supposed to motivate answers by quoting from the scenario. What are the causes of change here? Uh, the cause of change is technological factor and the motivation is b and b b and b advertisements strategy is now dependent on advanced online communication that is a new technology which has come up after covid another factor here is the market factor new nails saloons are now entering the market and introducing new products. That is another, that is a motivation for the market factor. Question uh, 3.5 requires a candidate, a learner to explain unemployment as a major change. 
that a business and people deal with, what does this question require? This question requires us, requires a learner to define the concept of unemployment in the first step. I'll give any two causes or causes of unemployment and what probably unemployment may cause or how it may affect the person who has been who has faced the concept of the aspect of unemployment. Look at this. Okay. Unemployment is a situation whereby an employee lose his or her job because they have been is has been fired or they quit or he quits his job. That's what you call unemployment. Unemployment can unemployment can lead uh, is I mean unemployment is as a result of it can be as a result of retrenchment. Unemployment can be as a result of unemployment uh, uh, retrenchment. Sometimes businesses may close. Business businesses may close down when businesses close down. Retrenchment that is one. That is, well, the company can no longer finance or meet its, meet its financial obligations, so it lay off some workers. Or when the business is closing, closing down, it may lead to unemployment. So it has a lot of effects that need to be dealt with because it can lead to trauma. It can lead to someone may become they may be traumatized, a thing uh, that may lead to depression, which can lead to depression of an individual. Therefore, someone who has, is depressed, who has been unemployed, he may face such challenges, which can even ruin completely his life and may even die. So we have to deal with the unemployment. Mm -hmm. Let's look at question 3.6. It talks about differences uh, between good and bad decisions. Future managers, you are supposed to call out good decisions. With that, before you make any decision, you are supposed to make a decision that is worth taking. What is a good decision? What is a bad decision? Differences should always be written in tabular form. Let's look at what we call good decisions. Good, a good decisions that is done by a manager or a business. A decision done by a manager, which is good. And we shall again look at what we call bad decisions. Bad decisions. How do uh, good decisions make, look like? Good decisions maintain high degree of integrity. High, there is high level of integrity. There's high level of integrity, which is so good. Uh, we, that is a good decision. However, if it is a bad decision, you are going to witness a lot of challenges. For example, uh, there is no consideration of values, no considerations of values. Of value. we don't the people don't care of how the decision will affect the community, will affect others, how it will affect the the, the values of others. That is it. Besides that, uh, good decisions honor professional practices. They honor decision, good decision honors this honoring of uh, professional business practices, professional professional 
application of business practices. Yes. Practices. What about uh, bad decisions? There is a lot of insufficient information. There is a lot of errors. Okay? There is insufficient, insufficient information. Decisions are based are not based on facts. That whatever is done is not based on what on facts and so many others. That is a, a clue on how to deal with them. Let's look at question number four. Let's look at question number four. Question number four. This is these are this is miscellaneous topics. Uh, miscellaneous topics. What does this mean? It is a combination of business ventures, and the, it is a combination of business ventures and the business roles. Ventures plus business what roles. So what does it come in? This one business ventures will give us questions which will give us plenty of marks and business roles will give us questions that will give us a total mark of 20 and both of them added together will give us 40 marks. <clears throat> Let's start one by one. One question by one. Uh, let's look at uh, the first question talks about outlining the uh, contractual impl implications of outsourcing. Uh, outlining the contractual implications uh, for question 4.1 business roles no business ventures business ventures uh, the contractual contractual Uh, implications implications of outsourcing outsourcing I remember very well I understand that now after looking at these ones in, sec in section A I prop we properly went through it even this time I think what it means by outsourcing now we understand it and we want to use that previous experience in order to attempt this very question. Let's see one by one. Who can oh sorry? I want to remind want us to remind ourselves what outsourcing is. Just as a reminder, outsourcing, outsourcing, outsourcing is when a business hires another business to be part of its business obligation and when such a task is completed the contract of the other new business is terminated so we are saying that a business hires another business to be part of its business its activity that could be because of several reasons, which we already saw. For example, a business that is outsourcing another business may be having shortage of skills in the field for which it is hiring an external business. Besides that, it may lack manpower that is specific or needed for that particular activity, that particular job, for which it is hiring another business. Um, it could be because uh, they lack equipment and tools which can be obtained by another business. That's why they have to hire the services of another business to come and perform a certain task in the in the oh, for this on behalf of this business. It is very common the construction company to hire the services of electricity installing company. 
So that is it. So let's look at the contractual implications of of uh, of uh, outsourcing as a business. Let's go. Look, look at this. So we are saying, first of all, a contract protects a contract protects protects a contract protects the rights the rights and responsibilities and responsibilities of the two parties responsibilities of the two parties involved two parties involved which two parties are we talking about we are talking about the outsourcing company and the other one that is outsourced so the contracts the contract uh, uh, the following aspects aspects included aspects included included in the contracts in the contract are as follows let's look at them one by one um, the aspects included in the uh, contract are as and the exact service service the service service or a product to be lended to be lended why are you outsourcing me for what am i going to do there it must be shown besides that the duration the duration of the contract duration of the contract must be shown as to how, many, how, how long am i going to be doing this work the duration of the contract the details details of the duties and responsibilities and responsibilities of of the parties what am i going to do when am i doing it who am i reporting to things of the like confidentiality confidentiality it, it is sometimes very important to have the clause of non-disclosure in a certain aspect that must not be uh, exposed to the public. And conf confidentiality is a very important clause in the contract during, uh, during uh, outsourcing. Also, terms of payment. Terms of, terms of payment. How are we going to pay? How am I going to be paid if I'm to do that? Then penalties. Penalties of non-conformity if I'm not or complying with the terms of the agreement, what are some uh, penalties am I going to face? And so many others that may that may be very important to be included in the contract. That is very important. Let's look at uh, another question just to save time. Uh, let's look at another question. Question. Uh, question 4.3 question 4.3 we are reading the scenario we are reading the scenario we are reading the scenario you can see oh no the, we are we want to look at question of 4.2 a procedures the procedure for the formation of a company procedures the procedure these are the steps steps that are needed that we should take when we are forming a company. That is 4.2. 4, 4 4.2. 4 uh, procedures. 4.2. Procedures uh, for the formation of company. Procedures. or formation of 
What are we supposed to do? Where should we start from? What should we do first? And what should we do? Procedures for the formation of company. First of all, determine the number of people. Determine the number of people who are establishing the company. People establishing the company. Determine. Uh, determine. Determine. People establishing the what? Establishing the company. Establishing the, the company. You must be very sensitive to how many people are required to start that type of a company you want to establish. Therefore, the minimum number is important. Minimum number is necessary to be maintained if it is uh, a partnership you know the number of people that is needed if it is a sole trade you must know the number of people that is necessary uh, besides that you are supposed to review uh, review or uh, set the company name, company, you must give a, a company its name, which must be original. The name must be, must be original, must be original, original, different, and describe the type type of service rendered by your company rendered by your by the company yes that's the name we talked about how the name should be by the, by the by the company, the company, yeah. the company. Uh, besides that, same as this, uh, besides that, after that, you are supposed, the name must be approved. The next step is approval of, of the name. Name must be approved by the CIPC by the CIPC this name must be approved by CP and Gazette so that nobody uh, uh, can can establish another business of the same type with the same name besides that you have supposed to draft draft or draw uh, the memorandum, memorandum of incorporation. This looks like a, a, a constitution of the constitution of the business, is, so which is going to guide all shareholders in the business after that you are supposed to receive receive the certificate certificate of registration of registration yes that you have registered your business from there you are supposed to open up open an account yes these things must be in a sequence you can't open up an account for the business before you receive the certificate of registration and after that you just register with the stores register with the revenue revenue services it's for tax or 
tax because any legal business must have to pay taxes. Thank you so much. Let's go to another step of the question, which says, um, question three says, we do a scenario, and then they answer the question that are following. Tamil Properties, TP, Tamil Properties owns buildings around the country. The business contract, contract with the TP and pay businesses contract with the TP and pay them every month for the use of the property for a specified amount of time. Tamil Properties owns a building or buildings actually around the country and businesses contract with TP and pay them every month for the use of property for a specified amount of time. The owner of the building is Tamil Properties. He gives, he gives them out in form of contracting to those who want to use and those people to whom uh, the buildings are lent out are supposed to pay a specified amount of money, a specific amount of what? Uh, amount of time which these people use. We have that question. Identify the business venture avenue. Identify the business avenue that is uh, used by Tamir. The business avenue is leasing. Business Avenue is leasing. I think it remind yourself very well. You can understand what leasing. This is when the the leaser gives out his property to LZ specifically to make sure that uh, the LZ pays for the use of that asset or property for a given period of time. Uh, beyond which the leaser will repossess the property. So the leasee, the person who is really uh, getting it from the, the person leasing it out, is going to own it for a given period of time, and the leaser is going to reown it again. What is the motivation, therefore? The motivation is that the business contracts, the business, the business, uh, businesses contract with TP and pay them every month for the use of the property, for the use for a, spe for a specified amount of time. That is it. So we are going to another question here. Uh, we are required to explain the disadvantages, uh, disadvantages or advantage, actually the disadvantages uh, of the business avenue identified in question 3.3.1. Advantages, uh, disadvantages, specifically uh, the DZ, the person does not own DZ, the DZ does not own, this person does not own the property, own the property for good, for good, which is bad, is just going to use it until uh, for a given period uh, of time. So even the laser, the laser, the owner of the property, the first owner of the property, controls, has control, has control over the asset, over the asset. But so and the financial obligations and the financial obligations. Every time, please, you have not paid it for me. You have not paid this amount of money. Please pay. Please pay me this. Eh? This continue paying. Eh? This continuous paying. Uh, 
it is spent a lot. A lot is spent a lot is spent on paying for lease, for lease, paying for a lease. It could be monthly or annually. This is too much. It is very hectic. It's not good. Okay. Sometimes uh, some businessmen fail to meet their debt obligations and they find it so difficult. Okay, let's look at this another question here, which requ requires us to advise a business on advantages of state-owned uh, companies. Reminder, the major key aspect in the question is state-owned what? Companies. And they want us to suggest to give advantages of state-owned businesses. For, for If we want to remind ourselves, what are state-owned businesses? These are businesses which are owned, owned and operated, owned by the by the government. The government. The government may employ certain individuals to operate them on their behalf, but the profits and revenues collected go to the state, to the state finances. You get that. So we see, we find it there. Basically, there are so many reasons why businesses, why the government start such businesses. Specifically, the best reason why the government may start such businesses is to provide provide basic necessities necessities that the private sector may fail to produce neglected by the private sector neglected by the private private sector state owned companies produce goods at a lower prices or, or, or supply goods their goods charge we charge a lower a lower price because they are basically their intention is to improve the standards of living of of of, 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 of its of, of people they avoid duplication of services because they tend to operate as monopolists avoid the duplication of services, duplication of services is avoided because they tend to operate as monopolist is avoided, is avoided. Uh, there is a planning body. There is a planning body responsible for managing. Managing planning can be done through a central control planning planning is done through a central body central body and we think these people are knowledgeable enough they understand the economic climate they can come up with appropriate policies that can benefit the business that such things and so many others and before and advantages of state-owned companies. State-owned companies are businesses which are owned by the government. They are government-owned enterprises. Let's look at another question, and this time they come from business rules. Question 4.5, business rules. What could be the internal causes, internal causes of change in the business mm -hmm. when a business has new goals or new objectives there could be a change that is happening and it is a new objective or a new goal of the business we change the way we've been doing our businesses 
Uh-huh. Another aspect when it is there is a high a high staff turnover, high staff turnover may cause uh, change in the business. Sometimes a uh, business face a situation where employees keep leaving the business. Today one goes, the other day, the other day, another one leaves, which is not good for the company, for the operations and the image. Therefore, there could be certain reasons, certain uh, uh, reasons as to why there is an increase of staff turnover. We need to change that. If it is identified, we need to change it. And that is one of the causes of uh, the the of changes. It could be because of new management. New management. When a new manager comes into the business, he may come up with a lot of changes where he looks at things in another way and then things could be changed. Another aspect could be because of retrenchment. When employees have been cut off from the job, you may find out certain branches, certain uh, uh, employees are given more tasks. Uh, uh, the number of uh, total output could be reduced. Uh, sources of, uh, I believe, maybe the amount of uh, raw materials to be used could be also be cut off. There are so many reasons that could re lead to causes of change of which retrenchment could be one of them, another one could be because of new equipments, new machines and the equipments. These new equipments always may be because of new latest technology, which is fast, which is clean and more efficient. It may lead to new changes in the company. For example, the efficiency of machines may Lender some employees useless in the company, or because they cannot use the new type of equipment of road, and therefore they can be retrenched, which is a change. Let's look at another part of the question, and it is a scenario. There is um, in Job Resort, that is MR uh, Resort, this company. Uh, uh, job resort employees are very tense and appear tired when they have to serve uh, their customers. They are they appear. Uh, I mean, are very tense and appear very tired when they have to serve their customers. Wow, these people are tired. Each employee is expected to wipe the table. Imagine, scrub the floor, wash the dishes after serving. This is too much work. The customer. Identify the causes of stress. There is a lot of stress which is seen here. Identify the causes of stress and then motivate your answer. You identify the causes of stress. And then motivate your answer. Yes, I think the causes, obviously the cause of stress, which we have seen, is heavy workload. Heavy workload. You can't just be doing too much of that. Heavy, heavy workload. Workload. These people are working too much. They have a lot of workload or if you said an idealistic target you would get a mark an idealistic target like uh, possibly this is unattainable by one single in individual within the short rest of time possible because each employee because each employee each employee uh, is expected to wipe the table Scrub the floor and wash the dishes after after serving. After what? Serving. I understand now you know how to write the motivation. You said when you want to write a motivation, 
you have first of all you have first of all a, in quote the whole sentence where it starts and where it ends don't just give a half of a point that's like cutting off a living person halfway just give get the whole point there that one would give us three marks discuss the importance of stress management he said uh, it is very important to understand that stress is very dangerous in the workplace. Stress is a very dangerous aspect in a workplace. And if it's not managed properly, it may lead to trauma and it may cause a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. We are saying if it's not managed properly, importance is of stress management that it can lead, it can cause uh, health issues, it may lead to health issues, may lead to health issues. The staff members, yes, they may become sick because of stress. stress. Besides that, st uh, people, uh, stressed employees may miss work. It may, may, may miss, miss work. Sometimes these people will not work because of stress. Uh -huh. So therefore, it is curbing down, curbing absenteeism. Curb absenteeism. So when there is proper absenteeism, when there is proper stress management, there is control of absenteeism. It may, that may include a, a lot of, uh, uh, where, where you increase productivity. Uh, uh, it reduces conflicts. It reduces conflicts and grievances are reduced. Conflicts are reduced and grievances at work. Very important. Mm -hmm. So it is important to control stress in the workplace. Uh, so uh, poor services Poor service delivery are minimized. Poor services are minimized, are reduced, to be rendered by a stressed employee. ETC, such answers and others are very crucial when we are answering that question. How can a business, how can a business recommend ways and a business can apply a force field analysis? our business can apply force field analysis. Just remind you under force field analysis, uh, force field analysis, just how, this is how we need to apply force field uh, analysis. So first of all, you are supposed to list, list the current situation, list current situation, guys. People, what you see here, invite your employees, tell them that what we are seeing is that we have a problem of shortage of, uh, of sales. Last month, we are selling around 2 million in a week. Now we are selling a half a million. What could be the, the reason? Then describe, describe the desired situation, and situation, then describe, describe desired situation, describe the desired situation is tell them that we are supposed to be selling two millions. This is what we, we want, we would like to be. Uh, so you have to write, write a plan for change, a plan, plan for change. Say so we need to, a plan for change. We need to change for the better. We need to change for what? For the better. And people must try uh, to give us uh, to give us what what is good and what is bad about that plan. Uh, what is good about that plan and what is bad about that plan. Yes, they must be uh, uh, by giving advantages and 
disadvantages for that strategy you are trying to bring for that strategy you are trying to people must give us the answers or ways how that could be of advantage or disadvantage list list all the forces driving or that's the driving forces of change and resisting forces of change list or uh, list I'm supposed to list driving uh, forces of change list all the driving forces of change list all the driving list all the driving forces and resisting forces look at what is uh, what factors driving forces and resisting forces what factors are prohibiting this business i mean these uh, forces this change to happen the way you like it from there list list we list uh all forces of change forces of of change in one column in one column after putting them in one column we assign assign scores assign scores which factor is very important from the most from the most important most important factor give it five then the list least important give it one so that the highest the what the one with the highest score should be considered the one with the highest score should be considered that is it that is how we use the first fluid analysis that is how we use first fluid uh, analysis okay for this reason uh let's look at section c i've been very very fast on that because we want to save some free time for this part which is very important section c and we see what is the major ways how we deal with this section there are certain aspects which we must know how to deal with these things we are going to look at one by one going to look at one by one what makes section c the asset part the essay part of business studies when we are given such a question for example in section c we are required to answer one question either number five or number six before you choose one just first look at go through other questions from both sections business best ventures or business roles find out which one of them you are more comfortable with and choose that very one you can do better remember we choose what we can do better known towards the most uh, difficult one to show that we are more superior than the rest of the class members no we do what we can do best by ourselves look at this so we have this question here question number five from a section of business ventures so any essay question has some important aspect that we must always consider when we are answering it any essay question must have what we call introduction it must have introduction introduction we must give our essay question an introduction write it 
from your answer sheet after numbering that question number five, write the word introduction. After writing the word introduction, we are going to introduce our, our question by going through at least comma and find, uh, uh, we are supposed to introduce with the two, two essays. Uh, this is two uh, clear sentences. Two, we are supposed to use a minimum of two points. We are supposed to write uh, a, 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 a paragraphs in a point form. Introduction points, uh, I mean uh, introduction paragraphs in a point form. Two paragraphs in a point what? Point form. Look at these questions. For example, they are asking elaborate on the meaning of memorandum of incorporation. Full stop. Find out what is the key word in this question. You want memorandum of uh, 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 incorporation. Then look at question number two. It talks about explain the benefit of establishing a company over other forms of ownership. Keywords here. Uh, forms of ownership or a company. Another question here is saying, discuss the differences between a sole trade, sole trader and the, the partnership. And then the last question says, advise the business on advantages of personal liability companies. The, what I'm underlining, these are keywords from the question. After identifying these keywords, key concepts in the question, you are supposed to choose any two of the keywords so that you can at least introduce, uh, use them as your introduction by defining them in simple words. For example, you can say a memorandum, or you can choose a memorandum of incorporation or a sole trade or anything. You say a company, uh, uh, you can say, let's say uh, a sole trade, a sole trade, sole trader is is a business owned by one person restore you can also say that a partnership uh, on your second paragraph in the point, the partnership is an agreement between two partners. From two partners. This could be your introduction. You can choose any of them. This could be your first uh, uh, heading 5.1. So you can go to the gist of the matter. What is very important? By giving the heading question 5.2 is elaborate on the meaning, you say the meaning, the meaning of a memorandum of incorporation. And then you underline this. You must give the heading. This one will give you layout one. Layout one. This one will give you two marks for introduction. And this one will give you analysis one. By just writing this, we have this all these marks already. The meaning of memorandum of incorporation. So you start to give us what you think memorandum of incorporation is. For example, we say this acts as a, con a constitution for all shareholders. It describes the duties and responsibilities of every shareholder. It gives us the date of uh, establishment of, uh, of the business and then the date of closure. It gives us uh, how shareholders are going to share responsibilities. ETC, you give us all that stuff, but remember to write inequality form. Most of the learners make a mistake by writing all their answers in one paragraph. 
you found you find a cloud of answers in one paragraph. That is very wrong. You find a swarm of answers in one paragraph. That is too bad. So you go to five, five point three heading, which is the benefits, the benefits, the benefits, benefits of establishing, establishing. A company over other forms, very easy, other forms of business, of business. So what are you supposed to do? Okay, you see how I have picked, that is looking for, I'm not including the word explain, you can see that this is not there when I'm doing my analysis. This is not there. You are seeing that this is very different from what I've written. I've just picked up this one. That is how we write. We analyze. That is analysis for your case. So you give your benefits of establishing companies. Public companies are so good. Like, for example, they enjoy limited liability. Limited liability. They are limited liability companies. They have legal entity. Entity, you must, you must explain what it means by a legal entity and you compare it with other companies that they don't have this and that makes it the company at a more beginning power. Talk about how taxes are made, taxation, Talk about how capital is raised, capital, how is capital raised, and how good it is. Go to question 5.4, which talks about, um, discuss the differences between a sole trader, sole trader, and partnership. This is so good. If you come such a question of uh, differences, you are free to use, you are free to use what? Use a, 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 you are free to use a table when you are doing your differences. Please use a table so that you give us your answers. Decision making is easy. You have to wait for all partners. Uh, share as profits alone, you have to, uh, profits are shared by all people. So you go to question, Another question is uh, question number five, uh, heading 5.5, .5, which talks about 5.5, uh, .5, which talks about advantages of uh, personal liability companies. Advantages of personal liability companies. Abilities. So you underline this and you start giving us your answers in a point form. Give us your answers in a point what? Point form, for example. All these ones are the same answers. Liability, limited liability, legal entities. We talk about the mode of taxation which are charged on incomes. Uh, capital is raised so quickly and more compared to a sole trade and ETC. Then the past part of the question is always 5.6. 5.6, and you try to talk about uh, five, the sixth part of the question should always be your conclusion. Should always be your conclusion. Conclusion. You are supposed to write the word conclusion, and after writing the word conclusion, Underline and come up with the stand what and the point you say maybe for example it is very important to establish public companies because their advantages way more compared to the advantages which are received by other forms of business what ownership or you can say the memorandum of incorporation is very important document. 
that a business will not operate well if it was not signed. Besides, it may not even be established. Company may not be registered without a memorandum of incorporation. The same depending on what you feel is the most suitable for you. And you receive layout too for this. It is the layout and receive your conclusion will take you two marks for conclusion. So look, this is how we award marks. The marker will award marks in this manner. For example, you will look for facts. Facts, if you have properly explained all the most important aspects, the facts, facts, these like facts like this, so they all take a total of 32 marks. 32 marks includes the two marks for introduction, the two marks for introduction, this one, the and the two marks, and the two marks for conclusion. Then they go to count answers for this one, answers for this one, the marks obtained here, marks obtained here, marks obtained, marks obtained at this point, all of them must add up, they add up to 32, they make a total of 32. Look, after there, uh, you are blessed with the free marks of the layout, it's called the layout, it can erase this, look at this, you are supposed to write the lay, the layout, which is uh, L, the present flasso, which is supposed to be two marks. Oh, where did we get the layout? Layout is the arrangement of work. Layout, how you plan to do your work. With your introduction, that was the first layout one, and then the second layout is always awarded on the conclusion, giving us, this gives us, this gives us, uh, this gives us, this gives us uh, two marks. This gives us two marks. Introduction and conclusion gives us two marks. Then look at analysis. Analysis is how, analysis is how we have broken down a question into a more simpler way so that we can understand stand the question. For example, when we said, when we said uh, differences between sole trader and partnership, we are analyzing. When you said the benefits of establishing the company over other forms of, we are analyzing the question of explaining the benefits like that, like that. So analysis gives us two marks, which we are awarded for the first uh, what for the first question that was analyzed up to the second one. Then there is what we call synthesis. Synthesis. Synthesis marks are two. They are awarded if you you are able to reason it, to give out proper answers on all the questions that we are required to be answered. The examiner will give you marks, two marks, if you have tried to answer correctly on the four on, on, on the four questions that we are given on this, on this question, this, question this question this and question this. If you gave all the headings right and you were able to expert, give the answers as required, you get synthesis, two marks free. Then originality, which is all originality. That is what we call a use of examples. If you've used any example somewhere, which type of examples are we talking about? We are talking about more appropriate and modern, most recent type of examples that we are given when you are explaining. That is how you award those 
marks original detail is for examples, and that will give you a total of 40 marks. That will give you a total of 40 marks. I always implore you, always make sure that at least you must have these headings numbered. I mean, uh, for at least you must have six headings. The first one must have be for introduction, and the last one should be for conclusion. Remember to give your examples. Headings are very crucial because they award you marks for analysis and try to give most relevant answers because they will help you to earn three marks of synthesis so that you can get 40 marks. Very important. For example, if we are to again come here, just as a reminder, make sure that you don't get lost. Just another example here. You are supposed to start with introduction. You write the word introduction on your answer sheet. After writing the word introduction, underline it at least. Look for keywords here, code of ethics. On this question, advantages of ethical business ventures, ethical business ventures. Explain the differences between the principles of ethics and principles of professionalism. Those are the keywords. Recommend ways in which professional, responsible, ethical, and effective business practice should be conducted. Those are what you call, that is, those are the same things we've been talking about. So talk about what you call ethics in your definition, at least define ethics. Also talk about what you call professionalism. Then you come, this should be question six, uh, this should be our first aid in 6.1, then 6.2, at least say the advantages, we give advantages for the body now, advantages, advantages of, oh, actually it's not advantage, sorry, we are talking about, uh, the first question should be, we are talking about, uh, uh, requirements, requirements, for a good, a good code of ethics. You underline this. Then you give your answers. So number three is so this will give your answers, but remember in the point four. Then the next uh, heading should be six point uh, three. They are saying uh, describe the advantages. Advantages. Advantages of ethical business business ventures underline this underline this and then you give us your answers then on 6.4 they're asking, uh, they're asking, uh, what is the question here? Can I see it? It's recommend, explain the differences, differences, uh, say, differences between principles of ethics and principles of professionalism. professionalism. So you come, you said it's very important that you search the uh, themes of differences. You draw a table, 
and you give us your answers in the tabular form. It is not compulsory, but very important because it makes you a very organized candidate, very organized learner. So look, so you give us ethics here, and you give us professionalism here. Differences. Then you give us, 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 you give us. Then 6.5, 6.5, they want us uh, to give uh, the profession, how the business can conduct itself in a professional, how, how the business can conduct itself professionally, ethically, and in a most good way, best way. So that is you give us your answers here, and then finally with good examples, and then finally you give us your conclusion. Underline this word conclusion and give us your answers. It's important to conclude with one standing point, but always avoid to conclude with your introduction. Some learners have made a very huge mistake by giving answers, I mean a conclusion from their introduction, repeating what they used to introduce the topic, the question with as their conclusion. That will not be awarded a mark. Thank you so much. Hopefully you have learned a lot. Let's meet another time. Thank you.